So I'm not going to be talking about too much today. I've got the PlayStation 5 launch details, some Half-Life VR news, Black Friday news, and finally some Oculus Quest updates to unpack. So hopefully you guys are able to track all that using this handy dandy clock thing. So yeah. Good news everyone! We now have official, semi-official, rumored details about the launch price and date for the PlayStation 5. And that is $500 on the 20th of November next year, obviously. Uh, now, as far as where these leaks and rumors are coming from, it is from a tweet courtesy of PlayStation Erebus. Um, many of the things that kind of support the fact that this may actually be true is that this user previously leaked the correct release date for The Last of Us 2. So, although it's a rumor, it may actually be credible. On that note, we do have a little bit more knowledge about what the DualShock 5 is supposed to look like. And short version is, it's a lot like the DualShock 4. The only minor details is that it's going to use haptic feedback rather than rumble. So instead of it simply vibrating in your hands, it's going to give you a little bit more of a... How, how shall I say this? Uh, a bit more of a dynamic feel, you could say, so that you'll feel a little bit more like it's, like whatever's happening in the game is directly happening to you. A little, sort of like what you would expect from, from a, a VR headset. You would, you would be able to feel everything that's going on through the controller as much as possible given the relatively minimal amount of connection that you would share with it. Then the other difference is that it would have adaptive triggers. So they will be able to get programmed by the developers themselves to provide different levels of resistance based on the game. So Say you're drawing back your bow in Horizon 2, uh, it's not really going to feel the same if, as you would, say, feeling the, uh, feeling the Leviathan Axe charge up in your hand when you're getting ready to throw it at a troll or something in God of War 2. 5. Whatever. Anyway. Those are the two. Th those are the two biggest differences that we can expect out of the DualShock Five versus the DualShock Four controller that we currently use for the PlayStation Four and the PlayStation Four Pro. <coughs> now, the only other minor differences are that it's going to use a USB-C port rather than the micro USB connection that we're seeing now as well as a small square just underneath what what appears to be the PlayStation button. But up until now, well, yeah, so far nobody knows what that what that square on the bottom is or how it relates to anything else. So, hopefully we're able to find out a little bit more between now and when the system and controller and everything launches next month or next year. A few weeks back, I talked about a rumored Half-Life VR game. Now it turns out that that game is in fact real. It's going to come to us in the form of Half-Life Alex, focusing around Alex Vance, one of the one of the leaders in Half-Life 2. Now, one of the biggest things that 
we may be able to look forward to here is that this is one of the three flagship first-party games that Valve has promised us that is intended to launch by late by end of year 2021. All that said, it's likely going to be, even if it's not necessarily required to be on a high-end headset like the Valve Index, it's very likely going to be capable of running everything that the Valve Index has to offer, including the finger tracking, be simply because it's a first-party product. So, long story short, it's something that we all should be able to look forward to, regardless of what headset, regardless of whatever we're doing will at least be able to look forward to Half-Life 3 in one form or another. Even if it is not quite in our original expectations, but still here nonetheless. Now, now Thanksgiving is next week, and Black Friday is right behind it. Now, I haven't talked too much about all the stuff you could find, but uh, there are a few deals hiding in the bulwark that you may not know about. One of them, in particular, is coming out of the Epic Game Store. While there are a few major games you will be able to find all the way from now through Cyber Monday on the 2nd of December, a couple of the major ones include Red Dead 2 for $50, Outer Worlds for $45 as opposed to $60, Borderlands 3 for $40, Metro Exodus for $20, and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint for 30 as opposed to 60 The entire list of everything you can find on that Epic Games Store Black Friday list you can find in the description down below. So, I hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving, good turkey day, and try to get some shopping done, at least a little bit without all the malls and the lines. You know, the general not sleep. One more thing. Okay, for those of you that want to get the absolute most that you can out of your Oculus Quest, uh, there is a new system that just went into beta called Oculus Link, where you will be able to link your Quest to a VR-capable computer with a few caveats. First, you'll be able to attach it using a USB 3 cable, directly to a, well, a USB 3 port and launch the Oculus desktop app and purchase all your Rift games and stuff and all that. However, one of the things that is has been shown through the comments as well as through other existing users of this system is that yes, you can play Steam VR games and well, well, those, those caveats, caveats are, well, well, a little tough. tough. First, as you, you could probably guess, you do need the USB 3 port, port uh, at, at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a processor, processor with, that is either an Intel, Intel i5-4590 or, or AMD Ryzen 5 1500X. All, All that, that being said, said, the GPU, on the, on the other hand, is the, is the only, only thing not listed in the recommended specs, as most of NVIDIA's possible GPUs are in fact supported, with the ones that aren't, including the Titan Z and the GTX GeForce 1060M. The ones that are include the Titan X, GeForce GTX 970, all 1070s, 1080s, the 16 series, and the 20 series GeForce. All, all this information you can find, as per the usual, in in a supported links in the description down below. And while all that's all well and good for NVIDIA GPUs, the same cannot be said for AMD. 
as there are no currently supported AMD GPUs available, or supported, I should say, as part of this Oculus Link system. So hopefully, all of that gets worked out and situated so that you will be able to play using your Oculus Link system on your Quest on a VR-capable computer with an AMD GPU. All of those major, major things that kind of work well together and kind of raise a lot of flags. Personally, I'm just looking forward to being able to use my very own Quest here in a few weeks. I don't have 350 bucks just laying around, but here in a few weeks. So, hopefully you guys are able to enjoy your system as much as possible, and I know I'm going to enjoy mine. So, all that said, have a great rest of your day, and try to get some sleep before you pass out from all your holiday shopping.